Once welcome to the system analysis, data processing, system and design course. Today, <clears throat> we'll be looking at the topic data storage and file organization. My name is Sati Satmer Dapel, and I'll be your instructor for this particular ride. Data storage and file organization are fundamental aspects of computer systems and database management. Efficient storage and proper file organizations ensure quick access, retrieval, and security of data. These lectures explore the key component methods and technologies involved in data storage and file organization, especially to the fact that we are dealing with digital data. Data can both be digital and analog, and the concept of digital data is transformed from the analog type. So if we have data, we must definitely store it. So let's look at data storage. Data storage refers to the process of recording digital information on a medium for future retrieval and use. It is a critical component of information system, enabling data persistence and access. What are the types of data storage? Okay, we have the primary storage and the primary storage is what we call the RAM. The RAM is called the random access memory. It is a temporary storage used for active process and data currently in use. The concept of RAM generally is when you have an environment that the processor uses in order to carry out all its processing activity. If you are booting your system, you're powering your system, your operating system will be loaded to your RAM. Whatever, you are, whatever application software you are loading that you wish to process your data with, it will be first of all loaded into RAM. And so that is why it's called a uh, 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 temporary storage. And it's volatile because once power goes off on the device, the content in the RAM is lost. So anytime you load anything or data in the RAM, it is always good to store it somewhere. So it is called primary storage because it is the main memory which the processor use in order to carry out all processing activities. Then we have the secondary storage devices. These are non-volatile devices because even when power goes off or not, you still have your data. And it include hard drives like solid state drive, SSD drives, optical disk, like uh, what do you call it? DVDs, CD-ROMs, and things like that. And then permanent storage used for long-term data retention, like um, hard disk, like your magnetic disk that you know. All right. All these are uh, storage devices that whenever you store your data, you don't get, it doesn't get lost. So first of all, the primary storage is like your RAM and it's volatile. Then the secondary storage is like your hard drive, your solid state drive, your optical drive, and the storage there is like permanent. Then you have what we call the tertiary storage devices. And these tertiary de devices are backup storage like magnetic tapes or cloud-based solutions, often slower but more cost-effective for archive purposes. What are we talking about? Sometimes it is always best when you are storing data, you can store data in a backup location away from the source of the data. And that is where you have where you have cloud storage, where you store your data in the cloud. So for those of you who may be having confusion, what is cloud storage? It's just like a storage device that is in the cloud. In the cloud means it's located somewhere remotely. Your, your Google Drive, is, is a cloud storage. Your Microsoft OneDrive is a cloud storage. You know, all these um, Dropbox and so on and so forth, they are all cloud storage. They provide you a platform where you can keep your data, you know, um, in the cloud. So those are tertiary storage uh, devices. Then you have the cloud storage itself, it stores data on remote servers access via the internet. Off offer scalability, remote access, and reduce infrastructure costs. Now, what is the difference between this cloud storage and this tertiary storage? 
The tertiary storage is includes cloud, but it's not only limited to cloud. It also includes your regular hard disk. You can have another external hard drive. Okay, apart from your internal drives, you can have like an external hard drive that you can back up your devices and things like that. So that is part of the tertiary. But the cloud storage, like I said earlier, basically offers scalability and remote access, reduce infrastructure costs and things like that. So let's look at file organization. File organization. File organization refers to the way data is stored arrange and access in the storage medium. Proper organization ensures efficient um, data uh, management and quick access, okay? What are some of the common file organization methods? We have what we call the sequential file organization, right? In the sequential file organization, data is stored sequentially one record after the other. Simple and efficient for batch processing, but slow for random access. Example is log files. What do we mean? Anytime you are storing uh, the, the, the file, um, it, it's just stored one after the other. Uh, it's like um, uh, the logs of your system or the logs of your phone or the logs in your processing. Uh, if 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 I save something today, it takes the the date of today. If I save another thing tomorrow, it comes. It takes the date of tomorrow. So you know it will store the most recent above the uh, later recent and things like that. Then you have the index file organization uses an index to locate records quickly and balances between sequential and random access. You know, example is your library uh, catalog. If you visit the library, the catalog section where you see that they, they, they keep like uh, uh, catalogs where you can use to select your books, all right? They are stored and numbered in a particular, using a particular index. Then you have what they call the random or direct file organization and in this method records are stored at specific locations determined by a hash uh, function and it allows fast random access but it's complex uh, you know to implement but is 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 very common example is the database with unique identifier uh, if you have like a database of student the unique identifier could just be like uh, maybe the matric matriculation number. So if I'm looking for a particular student, I can just key in the math number and then it will quickly access that record for me. Then you have clustered file organization and that groups similar or related records together, okay? And improves query performance for related data, okay? So how do you access your file? What are the different methods? All right, we have what we call the sequential access. Data is accessed in a specific order. That's the sequential access. It has to be one after the other and then after the other. For instance, as you can see here, if you access this, before you access this, before you access this, before you access this. That is sequential order, all right? Then you have the direct access. Data is accessed directly using an address or index like the matric number that we made example of. And then uh, you have index access uses index to jump to the location of the data. What are some of the factors that are affecting data storage and file organization? One is nature of the data. When you say nature of the data, we're talking about like the size of the data, the type of the data, the structure of the data, all right? And this, this, this uh, characteristics influences the storage method to tell you whether you're going to use index or direct access or sequential. And then it also tells you the kind of storage device that you're going to use, okay? Then you have the access pattern that also uh, influences it. So frequency and types of access, uh, especially to a file, if it's something that you access very, very frequently, um, tells you how you are going to store the file as well. 
okay? So it will tell you whether it's going to be sequential or random, okay? So that is very important. Then you have scalability. Scalability. Scalability is talking about the ability to grow. So system must accommodate growing data, the volumes. So if you have a storage and um, the storage does not have enough space, that means you do not have ability to grow. So you need to find a way to have scalability. Then another one is cost and performance. Okay, cost and performance. Balance between cost, efficiency, and performance is a requirement. Okay, because sometimes you are looking at efficiency, you are looking at performance, but you are also looking at cost at the same time. So you use that. That is also um, another thing that affects it. Another thing that affects it is the security. Data must be stored securely to prevent unauthorized access. And that's where you talk about passwording, you talk about encryption, you're talking about storing in a location that um, uh, you make sure that others do not have access. What are some of the emerging trends that you have in data storage? Some of the emerging trends. Okay, imagine trends are things that are happening of latest. So we have the solid state drives. We call them the SSD. They are faster, they're more reliable, and they're energy efficient compared to the traditional um, hard disk or the magnetic disk. Okay, so the solid state drive is, is, is much, much, much better. Then another one is the cloud storage. It's another emerging technology that we people have been encouraged to store their files in the cloud. So they synchronize their files between the system and the cloud, all right? And it offers remote access, scalability, and data redundancy. Another emerging trend is data compression. Because you have a lot of data, volume of data, and your data is growing, all right? You need to find a way to compress your data, reduce storage requirement by compressing your data. That is very, very key and very, very important. Then you have another trend called the blockchain for data storage. And what does this do? It provides decentralized, uh, secure data storage solutions, okay? So that you, you do not um, have only one uh, central storage. In case one fails, then you have another one that you can always fall back on. Then you have another new technology called the DNA data storage. And this is kind of an experimental method of storing data in DNA strands, promising massive capacity and things like that. It's an emerging technology that uh, is coming in very, very soon. What are some of those challenges that um, you have when it comes to data storage and file organization? Data redundancy. Repetition of data leading to wastage of space is very, very, in fact, it's a very frequent challenge. Even if you check your phone or you check your laptop, you know, you have the same data and you store it. It's like your phone, phone contact. You have the same phone contact, but you stay with different names, different people, you know, you, you, they, they, you store their names in different mm. ways. Repetition, okay? So when you have a lot of data that you store, and repetitively like that is cause wastage of space. Another challenge is data integrity. How do you ensure accuracy and consistency of the data that you stored? You know, it's it's very, very important. And, and that is why there are certain measures you have to put in place to ensure that your data um, has integrity and is stored very well. Another challenge is the speed at which you will access this particular data. Maintaining fast access timing as data volume grows is a key challenge, okay? Because if you want to download a movie, for instance, and when you want to download the music, the speed is different. Or when you want to download a particular file from a remote location. So the speed at which you access it uh, uh, plays a key role. Another challenge is the costs because the cost is tied to uh, the high capacity and the high standard that you want to um, you want to engage, all right? So you need the best of the best. And so the cost 
plays in a very key role in this particular area. So we need to bear that. In conclusion, effective data storage and file organization are integral to the performance of computer systems and databases. So understanding, understanding the types of storage and file organization methods helps in designing systems that are efficient, scalable, and secure. If this lecture is informative, subscribe and click notification bell. You also need to note that there are other lectures that are coming so that you can get notified. If you wish to take on further studies, we have references for further studies and uh, this is it here. So you can always visit it. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any question regarding the topic that we've just covered now, um, I encourage you to uh, use the comment section to drop in your comments. See you uh, in the next class. Thank you.